Well, we might be pivoting. This specific issue is new. Lock 11 and lock 12 are shut down. They're not working right now and there's no ETA. Oh jeez. The next lock, which is going to be completely different for us. Oh my gosh, this thing is huge. Holy cow. You know, it is, it is a journey. Hi, we're Jen, Elliot, and Ollie. In 2019, we left the United States and backpacked through 11 countries, all before deciding to come back home and try something completely new, pivoting into boat life. Our current adventure is America's Great Loop, a 6,000 mile journey through small towns, big cities, and the wilderness from the eastern portion of the United States, through the Great Lakes and Canada, and down the Midwest rivers, all aboard our home on the water, Pivot. Make sure you subscribe as we share our journey through the highs, lows, and everything in between. Is there some geese? Morning. Morning. How do you do? Morning. morning. This Good is, morning. This is our second day along the Trent Severn Waterway. We are here in Frankford. Is that lock six? We're going to lock 13 today, I think. We'll have some really interesting locks along the way. And uh, we're excited to have day two of canals and locks. It's amazing. Yeah. Now the max speed of the waterway here is 10 kilometers per hour, which translating that back into knots is about five and a half knots. But you're really not able to cruise these distances at any amount of speed. We might as well enjoy it and take it trawler speed, slower than slow. I can't believe our friends on Beluga, which is a 40 foot Nautitech catamaran, sailing catamaran, it has no mast obviously, because going through the canals you can't have a mast, but they have a 23 foot beam. That had to be like 23 feet. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's hard to judge sometimes, but uh, kind, of, kind of incredible. We didn't see any white paint, so they, they got through all right. We are coming up to lock number seven, and we are going to be locking through this lock with This Is It, who's behind us just a little ways. And for this lock, it's a little windy, but it's a lot better than it was yesterday, actually. So that's really nice. This is the first lock for today, so it means that like this kind of helps get us going in the groove for the rest of the day. Yeah. So the uh, lock tender, who was actually the woman who told us that we could stay at lock one wall a few days ago, um, she came out and said that the bridge just beyond this lock was having some issues. Um, so they're just pulling off boats onto the wall before the lock uh, until they can get it resolved. Unfortunately, she said that it's never happened before. <laughs> like 
Not that the bridge hasn't had issues, but this specific issue is new. So I don't know if that's a, it doesn't sound like that good of a sign. But uh, anyways, we'll make the most of it. And not even five minutes later, they said the maintenance officers are just so good that they've already fixed it. And that we're gonna be a trial run. So they said they will be able to open it for us. It's just TVD on if it will stay open or if they'll be able to close it. So we're gonna get off the wall and get going. Stern line. The line that you're at now, put the back, put the stern line there. I think put the stern line at the one you're at. Right here, okay. Uh, stern line is on. It's not our first time. <laughs> Last night for dinner, I made us some ramen, and that's what we're having left over for lunch today. So it has spinach, cabbage, carrots, mushrooms, a miso broth, and like a soft boiled egg. It's really good. It feels like it's really similar to the Erie where we kind of had a lot of cities really close and some more industrial areas at the start of the Trent Tavern. And now day two, it's getting a little bit more rural. We've seen a lot of campgrounds, a lot of cottages. And now we're in an area which is like really grassy. It reminds us of the low country, Georgia and South Carolina. Many differences, but there are some similarities. And one of them being that it's absolutely beautiful. Looks like we're going one way because that's where the town is and then we cut off through this tiny little entrance to the trees and this is our next lock. Coming into the next lock. Lock eight. It might be, we're gonna be a little close, baby. Okay. Our boat is three 
Yeah. Alright, I think slow it down. Slow it down. Yeah, this is uh, fine. Hola, first mate. How are you doing? Good. You want a good locking? Yeah. Well, we might be pivoting. <laughs> the uh, lock 11 and lock 12, which we're on lock 8 right now. Those are our last two locks before Campbellford are shut down. They're not working right now and there's no ETA. They are being worked on so we are going to leave and probably stay at a lock wall before then and keep you guys posted. One of the cool things that you can do on the Trent Severn Waterway is that you can kayak or canoe the entire route. Whenever the canoes or kayaks approach the locks, there's a lower platform at some, not all, of the like lock walls. And that's so that way the canoes and kayaks can have like a middle ground to like an easier step to get up and, and bring the canoe or the kayak out and onto the onto land. Which is really cool. And we've also seen that you just need to get the permission of the lock tender but that you can also camp at all of these like lock stations which is really neat and i think it's like five dollars per person to camp overnight which is really really affordable
Lock 10's walls are covered with muscles. All of that. There are two types of mussels that are invasive species throughout this whole entire region. They are the zebra mussel, and then there's another type, but I forgot what it is, so I'll put it on the screen. The zebra mussels are native to a region in Eastern Europe, I think like the Dead Sea and the Caspian Sea. They were brought here, I think, in the 80s, and it's been an ongoing problem. These two types of mussels, though, um, are really bad for the environment. It's really interesting to see like the zebra mussels up close. Sad to see so many, but also a bit interesting. This is the lock that we have to stay at. Actually, we could have stayed at the locks prior. The next lock is the one that's broken. So there's like five boats here, and we are the last boat that will fit. So we're gonna go help our uh, neighbors catch some lines, and then uh, dock ourselves. This is it. Greg and Tammy have docked. They're done for the day, I think. And we are going to move right here. And uh, we had some good news um, that the next lock may be ready in an hour and a half. So, still very much TBD, but uh, and if we have to stay here, it is not the end of the world. Everything is fine. It's because we are on a trawler and we go slow anyway. We are in no rush, no as we rush. like to put it. Slower and, than slow. You know, it is, speed. it is a journey. Thing off the floor. Okay, that's fine. Just one of those two. Preferably stern, but if you need to get midship first, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Good news. Like, literally, probably 10 minutes after being here uh, and just chatting with everybody, the lock tender came up and said, release the hounds, her words. So, uh... So we're going to the next lock, which is going to be completely different for us yeah. because we are going to be rafting. And so what that means is that they are putting four boats in a lock at one time. And yeah. so far we've only gone in with two boats right. in these Canadian locks. So we will be tying up not to a wall for this particular lock, so but to the net, to the boat, um, yeah. yeah, to another boat. So we, yeah, so we are on boat duty, not wall duty. So we will be tying next to the boat. The real difference is that we need to go slower because we don't want to hit their boat and we need to put fenders on both sides because we're going to be close to the other wall. Should be fun. Yeah. Let's do it. We'll see you guys uh, down the road. It was fun. It was fun. And I'm sure it won't be the last. First lock is successful. Uh, wrapped it up to our neighbors here um, on Aqua Chef. And then we're going to unwrap, and then everybody's on the port side up here. This should be interesting. I need you to be on my uh, port side aft. Yeah, okay, I think we're good.
Alright, babe. Okay, get ready. Do you want me to get this one here? Uh, sure. Right. No, grab the next one. Grab the next one. Just like that, we are done with locks for today. That was awesome. Uh, our rafting buddies were awesome. The second lock, we didn't raft. So that was kind of interesting getting off. And there's like a little bit of a thunderstorm that just came in. So, you know, that's life on pivot. But uh, yeah, only two more. Well, I think it's only, yeah, only one more nautical mile to Campbellford. So almost there. We were running the AC and um, Jen mentioned it wasn't coming off that coming out that cold, so I turned up the fan. So it was running harder. And I don't know if we flipped the breaker here or what, but somehow we started running off batteries and we have a 175 amp fuse because that's slightly under what our wires are rated for. So this will break before our wires melt and burn down the boat. Which is what happens, which is a which, good thing. Yeah, which is a really good thing. I'm just not that happy about it because now I have to replace the fuse and I only have two more of these. This this is only the second time it's ever happened. The, the first time we left the water heater on accidentally. Um, and then this is the second time, but it's kind of unfortunate. And now I'm going to be like thinking about running appliances on the AC power here. And it's like, is it going to flip and is it going to break? And then I only have one left. And I have some more fuses actually that are a higher amperage. I have a 150, actually 150 is less. And then I have like a few 250s and I have a few 500s. So I have options so that way we're not totally out of electricity. But make sure in your boat where your main fuse block is, make sure you have the right fuse for your boat. Because if you don't, and this happens to you, your wires will melt and you'll start to smell something and be like, what is that smell? and it, you'll open up your uh, hatches or whatever and you'll see burning wires and you don't want that to happen so make sure you have the right fuse oh. oh geez okay a little bit of sparky sparks i'd like these sparky sparks <gasps> that was supposed to be off. Is it at all? The AC still is on, clearly. I made a whoopsies. I turned off the batteries, thinking that was going to turn off everything, which it should have really. I don't know why that didn't work. That is off, right? Yeah, it's off. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't work. But we still had batteries. We still had juice going to our inverter and everything. Um, and so I, as soon as I connected this, we had a spark and um, um, our AC turned back on, which is not good because we're not on shore power right now. So, it's a mystery. Always love a mystery. Great, you get to solve it. So, mystery solved. The breaker uh, for the marina flipped, which means that we pulled too much current for it, uh, which is surprising. I mean, we just pulled 30 amps. It's, this has never happened to us. Um, I say that like air quotes because it did happen with us in our home port marina, which was. But that we that, weren't on a 30 amp. Yeah, that one we weren't on a 30 amp. We were on a 15 amp. So I don't know. Kind of sucks because now I just blew a flu blew a fuse, which are uh, limited quality quantity for us. I mean they're easy to get more just shipping Amazon. So we're gonna restart it, turn the AC back on. I'm already sweating, and. Um, Hope that doesn't happen again. What do you mean? Seems to be holding for now. 
Um, we turned our AC off from high to medium, the fan. Um, so, which is fine, it's still cold enough. Tonight for dinner I'm making a Spanish paella. I'll have some nice like Spanish rice, some vegetables, some artichokes, some peas, some bell pepper. It'll be good. Oh, the breaker just flipped again. So there goes another fuse. Um, maybe we just have to run the AC on low, you think? Maybe. It lasted like 15 minutes. And I literally had looked at it probably 15 seconds before it blew. Like right away. Yeah, we're back in business with the last fuse that we have. But we do have some more. They're just not our optimal um, amperage. We like 175 amps for our battery configuration and usage and everything like that and wire length and all of that. Um, and what I did this time is one, I've moved the plug to another part of uh, another outlet on the pedestal. And then, because that's what's flipping. And then the other thing I did was I, uh, on our inverter, I turned off the inverter setting, which I think if that flips, the whole system will come down instead of that flipping and then the system stays on and then our fuse breaks. Because so, it's transitioning to battery. Yeah, we don't want it to be running off our battery. So round three, brace the pivot. I hope you guys enjoyed our day two on the Trent Severn Canal. It was good, not without its challenges, but stay tuned for our next video where we dive deep into Campbellford. They have a lot of really neat local spots and we're looking forward to them. See you tomorrow. Hey. Alright, it's rolling. Heading to Campbellford today on the Trent Severn Canal. Waterway. Waterway. We are heading to... I keep saying canal. Is it waterway? I think it's a waterway. Let's do it. Today is day two of On our adventure. Oh. We got a lot of energy. Got a lot of energy. Alright, ready? Yeah. It's... <laughs> a little windy. And another one fights the dust. For the second time today, we have... It looks like we're going to go one direction. Because that's where the... Uh, What's that red blinking? It's running out of battery, I think. <laughs> Did you get that on camera? That's something. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs>